drawing the same portrait, but in three different sizes. Let's jump into it. Hello, my name is Jade, and I like to paint with pixels. For this month's pixel portrait practice, I thought it might be fun to do a little portrait challenge. So today we're going to be using the same stock reference photo, link for this is in the description, and we're going to be creating a study of the portrait in three different sizes, 100 by 100 pixels, 50 by 50 pixels, and 25 by 25 pixels. And we're going to start off with the biggest portrait, 100 by 100 pixels. The reason that I'm starting with the largest canvas size is because it's the size that I'm most used to when I'm drawing uh, my portrait studies. If you're new here from last week's video, hi, hello, welcome on in. Uh, I've been learning to draw portraits since December of last year and using my week daily practice that I've built up to help me create studies of photo references every weekday for about 30 minutes. And I've been posting the whole journey on Instagram. A link for that, as always, is in the description. I mentioned in my previous video about portraits, but I'm starting us off with blocking out the main silhouette of the reference and then going from there and filling in the details, as I found that this is the easiest way for me to get started. In my most recent studies, I've sort of found a rhythm with how I draw faces. I try to block in the general structure of the face, kind of where the eye sockets are and where the nose rests and then the mouth that's like underneath it. And then I'll go back in and actually add in like the eyes and the eyebrows and the hair. So it might look a little funky for the first half of the little time lapse, uh, but it'll get better. It's one of those things where you gotta trust the process. That's what I've learned from this. Oh man, portraits are a very uh, trust the process <laughs> process. <laughs> But the funny thing is, I've actually drawn a study of this portrait before. I didn't realize it until I drew the first portrait, but this is one of the first studies that I did in a sort of monochromatic palette, since I thought it would be easier to slowly introduce adding color to my studies rather than overwhelming myself with too many options. And plus, it gave this really cool pop art vibe that I quite liked. After a bit of noodling around, with a few pixels here and there, this is the final result. I decided after doing the grayscale study that it might be fun to try and add some color to these, and this is the result of that. Comparing this to the study that I did two months ago, I feel like I've definitely improved even after a pretty short time between the two, and that's really cool to see. I can tell that the proportions and the general shape of the face have definitely improved, and you can tell I've gotten a bit more confident with adding more detail to the hair as well. Next up, the 50 by 50 pixel canvas. I was actually a bit apprehensive starting this because it's something that I've never worked on at this scale before, on just a portrait. But the whole reason for giving this a go is to try and challenge myself and see what I've learned from uh, the studies that I've done so far. I think at this scale I start to notice what features of the face are most important to me. I had to cut off a bit more of the bottom of the reference where their sweatshirt was, uh, so that just the face is the main focal point and I can give it as much space as possible to add in all those details. Or as much details as I can at this scale. A challenge with this, I think, is to figure out how to keep all of the proportions of the face similar to what I did in the bigger study and the reference. You'll see, even at the end of this, that I have to shrink down the eyes uh, by one pixel, but even that one pixel does make a big difference. 
In this one, you'll also see that I spend a lot of time on the nose, especially, and it's definitely a feature that I struggle with on any of the face faces that I've done in any of the studies, even at the canvas size that I'm more used to at 100 and 100 pixels. I think it's in part because I don't use a lot of colors in my portraits, mostly because I quite like the simpler style that I've got going on, but uh, it also means that I struggle to add in volume where I need it, uh, and especially where the nose is, it starts to look a little flat and sometimes odd, especially at the more extreme angles. But after dropping in the colors, this is what the second portrait looks like. I think this portrait is okay. I like the hair, both in the amount of detail it has and the shape resembles the reference pretty well. But I'm still not 100% happy with the nose on this one and it feels way more noticeable that something is off because it's both front and center of the study. But also since even though it's a smaller canvas, uh, everything feels a lot bigger since each pixel is scaled up by a bit more, uh, which makes some of my errors stand out a bit more. But hey, I think it's still pretty good for a first attempt. Finally, the 25 by 25 pixel canvas. Oh boy, this one was a struggle. I was actually really nervous to record the process of this one because again, it's another canvas size that I never really work with, at least for portraits. Though I really should practice drawing at the scale more, because I know a lot of artists suggest that you start small and then work your way up. Um, I have done a few sprites at this scale before, but mainly for my Twitch emotes of my little robot avatar, who's called Indy. Um, but because I'm working with way simpler shapes and I just have to worry about the eyes for my little robot, it is a lot simpler to do than uh, a proper human face. This definitely was a new challenge for me. I was trying to think that at smaller scales, each individual pixel has a way bigger meaning. And I've noticed that you have to be a lot more intentional with where you're placing the pixels and what meaning you want them to have. I actually struggled with the lips in this study for that exact reason, which I was quite surprised with. If I added one too many pixels, then I could completely change her expression from being happy to sad which is wild because it was only two, one or two pixels. Uh, and even though they aren't really smiling in the reference photo, I couldn't get the lips to match what they look like in the reference without it looking way too sad. So in the end, we just settled on a smile. I do find it crazy that how at the scale, a pixel that's in the wrong place is way more noticeable than it is in other portraits, which again, you'll see me mess around with like two or three pixels that I have to work with and shuffle them around endlessly to try and to try and create a nose. I knew I had to put a time limit on these studies, otherwise I knew that I would be here forever just pushing around those few pixels and uh, I would have for sure overworked the study. So I'm glad I put a I'm glad I put a time limit on it. Eventually, we settled on this, and surprisingly, the end result is way better than I expected. I did lose a bit of the sweeping shape of the hair on top, but overall, uh, I actually really like this one. Even though, oh man, if you heard my voiceover while I was drawing this, you would not think that I liked this so much <laughs> as I did, as I do in the end. And this is the final result of all three portraits together. This was a really interesting challenge, and one that I think I might actually try again another time. Out of the three, I quite like the smallest portrait, which is so surprising to me. Uh, but it is really cool to see the progress from the first time I drew the study in my biggest portrait. 
I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know if you gave this challenge a go uh, and let me know in the comments. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care out there. Bye-bye.